So a very good morning to the students of class 6 far. Welcome to our social science geography class. And today in our social science geography class, we are going to discuss the first chapter of your geography book. The name of the book, you know, the earth, our habitat. And today we are going to discuss the first subunit or first chapter of that book, the earth in our solar system. Okay. So before starting the class, all the students are requested to mention their name in the chat box. I will take your attendance from that portion. Right now, there are 13 students present in class 6 far. So all of them are requested to mention their name and presence in the chat box. And quickly open your book at page number 1. Okay, students. So let's begin our today's class. Okay, all the students are requested to mute their microphone. Rupsha and others. Okay, 17 students joined. So all the students who have joined recently are mentioned to are requested to mention their uh, name and presence in the chat box. I will take your attendance from that portion. So now look at the first page of your book. So before starting our geography, you have to know what is the meaning of the subject, geography. Why we should read the geography? Because geography is a study of places and relationships between the people, our planet Earth and the solar system and their environments. And geographers explores both the physical properties of our planet Earth and Earth's surface as well as the human societies spread and living across it okay so let's begin the first sub, uh, uh, first chapter so how wonderful it is to watch the sky after sunset so one would first notice one or two bright dots shining in the sky soon you would see the number increasing with the night and what happened? You cannot count them anymore. After a certain time, you certain time you cannot count because they are enormous, countless, and the whole sky is filled with tiny shining in this way, shining objects. Some are bright, others are dim. And it seems as if the sky is studded with diamonds. They all appear to be twinkling, but if you look at them very closely, very carefully, you will notice that some of them do not blink. 
do not twinkle as others do they simply glow without any flicker just as the moon shines along with this bright objects you may also see the moon on the most of the days in the night sky however the moon appears in front of you in, in the night sky in different shapes in different pattern and you can see the mo full moon only once in about a month's time it is called a full moon like a full moon and uh, on that day the moonlit also illuminated everything illuminated everything is a full moon and in bengali hindi and sanskrit it's called purnima okay it is also called purnima or full moon night a fortnight later means after 15 days you cannot see it at all for a day and it is a new moon night when the moon totally disappear from the night sky and it's complete dark that is called a full moon uh, sorry it is a new moon night or amavasya and on this day you can watch the night sky best and provided it is a clear night and on that day you can clearly observe the other tiny objects in the night sky do you wonder why can't we see the moon and the all these bright tiny objects in the daylight do you know the reason the reason is the day, because of the sunlight because the bright light of the sun does not allow us to see all these bright objects on the night sky the sun the moon and all those shining objects in the night sky are together called celestial bodies the sun the moon and all other tiny objects in the night sky together called celestial bodies those of bodies are natural objects are visible in the night sky they also called the celestial bodies and some celestial bodies are very big and hot like sun and they are made up of gases and they have their own heat and light which they emit in large amounts and this type of celestial bodies are called stars and from very far those celestial bodies is they looks twinkling the sun is a star it is the nearest star to our planet earth except suns there are countless twinkling star in the night sky are similar to the sun but we do not feel the heat or light because all these tiny objects situated very very far from our planet earth so that's why we cannot see the we cannot feel the heat or we receive the light of those stars some of the stars are very huge their size is 100 times than our sun but those are situated also very far thousand times far than our planet our the closest star sun you must have noticed that all those objects in the night sky look smaller when see from a distance okay so how small an aeroplane looks when it is flying in a great height so i think some of them and most of the students they have seen the 
aeroplane, the size of the aeroplane, how big it is. But when the aeroplane is flying, it's very looks very small. Because most of the aeroplanes they fly on the average height of 31,000 feet. Okay, so I think you have understood what is stars. Now next we will discuss about the constellations. What is constellation? That while watching the night sky, night sky, you may notice various patterns formed by those tiny objects or tiny stars or a group of stars. These are called constellation. So what are the constellations? That constellations are the patterns formed by different groups of stars and there are and uh, Ursa Major or Big Bear is one such a big constellation. Okay, So these are called constellation and Big Bear or Saptarshi or Ursa Major, these are some example of constellations. Saptarshi, the Sapta means seven, Rishi means sages or the seven sages, it is a group of seven stars, it is a very common to us a very common constellation that forms a part of a large Ursa major constellation. So and uh, it looks like a question mark in the night sky. You can see the figure number 1.1 about the uh, and you can see the shape of the seven sages like a question mark. So in ancient times, people used to determine directions during the night with the help of the stars. And the north star indicates the north direction and it is also called the pole star. So if I will draw the picture, you can see clearly about the different, about the positions of the different, different stars formed the seven sages or Shaptarshi. So there is another star. This is a Shaptarshi. So we can, if we join those stars, the line, these lines, it looks like a question mark. So during the night sky, there is a star that situated in the northern position indicates the north direction. It's called north star, and it is also called pole star and uh, we can locate the position of the pole star with the help of Saptarshi. So look at figure 1.1 1 .1, and you will notice that if an imaginary line is drawn joining the pointer star, means the last star of the Saptarshi and extended further, it will point the pole star in this way. Okay, so it will point the pole star in this way. Point, if we increase the pointer star, so directly the line touched the pole star. Okay, this is obviously those lines are imaginary lines. So in this position, you can see the pole star in the north direction of a clear night. Some celestial bodies also do not have their own heat and light and they are lit by the light of the suns. Such bodies are called planets. Okay, such bodies are called planets. Those celestial bodies don't have their own light and heat and illuminated by the light of the stars like planet earth is a is an planet illuminated by the light of sun and day and night and day occurred because of the light a light and heat of the star sun so the word planet comes from the greek word planetai and the planetai means wanderers So, the 
earth on which we live is also a planet you know then it gets all its heat and light from the sun which is the nearest star of our planet so if we look at the earth from a great distance like the moon say the moon it will appear to be shining just as the moon the moon that we see in the night sky is a satellite of our planet earth and satellite is an satellite is a celestial object that moves around the earth or other moves around the planets so there are eight other, uh, there are seven other planets that get heat and light from the sun some of them have their own moons too and moons can be more than one on those planets okay students so next day we will discuss about the solar system and the different uh, different different planets and their distances from the sun and also about their moons means the satellites so if you have any question from this sub unit the first sub unit you can ask me okay so this video will be uploaded in the youtube later on after all this uh, finished in the i think in the afternoon it will be published in the youtube and uh, 18 students present all the students again i am telling you to mention their name in the chat box i will take your attendance like ankita arush arya avipsha ismat jehan lavani navamita nandita prithviraj rahul rupsha sampurna shayan shomik shomili shubham and ronak okay so i hope you have understood this sub unit read carefully all this next day i will ask some question from this sub units and about the definitions and examples okay so thank you for watching see you in the next class bye everyone